Hello and welcome to our sandwich making video for Super Showdown Bowl. It's going to be big. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way, all right? <laughs> strap yourself in. This is going to be a really long ride. Yeah, and you'll have to strap yourself in because you'll want to leave. Mm. Like, yeah. No, no. And we just can't have that, you know, no. because audience retention is everything. So please, exactly. either get out now or strap yourself in. Strap it in. Thank you. Lock yourself. <laughs> Chain yourself in. Done this before three times. Mm -hmm. No, twice. Three oh, times. three times. Yeah, the we first did one was the Captain America, America Civil War trailer remember, two spoon. Yes, we did. And we did superhero bowl, super villain bowl. Mm. Now we're doing the making of the super showdown bowl. Yes. And I looked at the previous ones and I thought, you know what, Rita? I don't think we've gone into enough excruciating, infuriating detail. It wasn't painful enough. It, yeah, so I aim to remedy that. For you or time. for all the viewers? All involved. We have scripts, sorry. So if you see us looking down, uh, if you see us reading the audio cue, that's in shot. Joe came to me about five minutes ago and said, I've got a script for this one. I thought, oh, Joy. But then I saw what he'd actually typed up. And this it's is just a bit, a lot down. of What's nonsense dot points. It's definitely not a script. It's just... No, that's my Stuff line. To chat it's definitely about. not a script. Pause for laughter. Stage one, writing. Yeah. The laziest stage. And why? Because we can do it lying down. Best part. That's just lazy writing. This script was written over the course of 2018, jotting down ideas and lines of dialogue every now and then. And we finally forced ourselves to sit down. We sat. We didn't lie down, apparently. And oh, finish it. We probably did lie down. I just wrote sit down. And finished it in October and I had the first and final draft finished November 2nd, 2018, with maybe a few additions in January 2019. There wow. will be a test. So we're now talking about a video that was done almost three years ago. What's this? Right, because we wrote it before Avengers Endgame. We didn't know they were going to try and travel. No, so therefore, otherwise they, they might have had... They weren't in that se sequence. We might have had some Avengers going back in time, but yeah. no, we didn't uh, know for sure that's what they were doing. Based on Endgame, the only changes we made to the script were uh, physicals. Fat Thor, Smart Hulk, the fact that Cap catches Thor's hammer. Okay. So that was the only thing. Probably added in the guide audio stage as like, you know, a sound effect. And That's Oh, sorry, right. maybe in the voices stage. Ideas were added at every stage, you know. So like you chuck a sound effect in or do mm. an extra line or, or voice or exertion because you've mm. thought of something that the character's going to do. Ugh. Unlike the other two bowls, this one had a clearer story... A clearer story structure. You got it. Basically because everybody was on the same side and it wasn't like a free-for-all, whoever could fight, whatever they That's, wanted to do. How did you know? That's I what read I read it before. Oh, okay. <laughs> so writing that, we had to work backwards. Okay, so how do they kill Oscar? Well, okay. he's got uh, one weakness. How do they know he has a weakness? Well, you have the characters, they can read minds and sense someone's inner feelings. We knew we wanted to have time travel sequence in the middle with Doc and Marty and a bunch of other characters, mm. but we didn't want them going back and undoing anything or changing an outcome because that would be cheating, as Hermione says. Exactly. That's cheating. And they could just do it indefinitely until they won. So so the time travel had to be a fact-finding mission. Yes. Uh, so what if they had to go back to find out how the damage was done to Oscar, so they know his weakness? Well, we didn't want them to just go back 10 minutes. That's hardly worth my time! So something has to go wrong, then they're stuck in the past, and we get to see an earlier version yeah. of the arena. Um, and how it all started, give Oscar a little bit of a backstory as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, like in Back to the Future, they don't have plutonium, so they have to rely on lightning. Well, find lightning is a lot easier to come by in an arena full of superheroes, so mm -hmm. we could get them to go there, and so on. Yeah. It's basically it wrote itself. We didn't do anything. No. We just watched it happen. Oh. We did want to have a good payoff though between the uh, winners of the villain and the hero bowl as well. Holly and Deadpool. So although we didn't want them to be the sole heroes of this particular Super Showdown Bowl and the only reason that anybody survived, we did want to have a bit of a payoff there and create a yeah. bit of a storyline there as well. That's right. So. Harley still has the one ring, so that fed into killing Oscar side of the, It literally fed into killing Oscar. There were a lot of lines of dialogue that we just wrote because we know, knew that that, this had was, that had to be said and this was part of the story. So when we got to the end of it and we had a bunch of lines left. Yeah, we then... with the character name just as a question mark. So like, yeah, well, so we had name. a whole bunch of characters that we hadn't used yet that we definitely wanted to use and give a line to. Yep. And usually these were characters that didn't play a huge part in it, but either hadn't been seen before, had been requested by someone, or had a very distinctive voice. We did then try to take the lines that were left and tie them to the characters that we had left and sort of make any kind of connection that we possibly could do. Sometimes that involved tweaking the line. Hellboy, we originally had the line, what do we do now? We changed it to... What the hell do we do now? Brilliant, aren't we? 
to we make it help. less generic, find a reason a joke if you for could. it to be that specific yeah, yeah. character. It will be the first planet designed by committee. One of the lines was everybody charge. Oh, okay, connect it to somebody that charges. Robot yeah. character or something. It could have just been that's the character that said the line, but then we pushed yes. it too far and had, and him, had him literally actually. charge his head when he says it. The end sequence, we wanted something fun for the ending and some of the viewers were asking that we do other kinds of bowls. So we had this idea which was somewhat inspired by the ending of 22 Jump Street where they give you a montage of Someone. fake sequels like 23, 24, 21, 21 Jump Street. Show a brief glimpse of what those bowls would be like and that, that way we don't have to do the full thing. Mm. In terms of anime and those kind of things, we're aware of the genre, we know mm. a little bit, but we're not gurus on it and that was only going to end up in backlash for us when we don't <laughs> when we're spoofing we characters enough. and we're writing characters that we really don't know most of the gags are just puns on the name of the video game because that's <laughs> that's all we know about it you say goodbye i say hello with the end song which you know still saw topic to to talk about a little bit uh we wanted to have a big celebration and spoof a song and we landed on superstition so, Stevie Wonder. I guess because it had super in the word was one of the first things that popped into my head and then Joe used it and transformed it into a song because he could make the verses work. And did such a good job that EMI claimed copyright when I'm not going to play a <laughs> clip in this because it took us a while to get that video back and that was a nightmare and I want to go through again. But <laughs> if you'd like to have the full song, please go onto our band camp. It's there for free. Or you can pay for it if you want to full it. <laughs> you can listen to it for free. <laughs> Better quality. The script came out at 46 pages. Stage two, voices. Definitely the sweatiest stage. Yeah. How many shirts for you? I tried to do a different shirt every session to distinguish them in the video. So it uh. might have been 16 shirts. And that'll be the title of my autobiography. I think that's all the shirts he has. Many new characters had to be voiced for this video as well as many returning ones. Hopefully we're getting better at some of them, but I suppose that's for others to violently contradict. These were all recorded from May to September 2019 with a couple of redo sessions in late December with a Zoom H6 recorder, the same one here, in a spare toilet at what was hopefully our last rental property, using a mattress, coat, towel and foam packaging for sound absorption. Just like the other bowls, we also filmed every embarrassing second of these sessions on Rita's phone, and if you struggle through to the end of this video, you can You'll see all the final see takes them. in the infamous side-by-side -side segment. Yay. When we do the uh, trailer parodies, we usually have the actual trailer there for reference with the voice and we'll use lines and then follow them on to something else. But obviously with this video, we had to just use clips from YouTube and from the movies and everything else, cut together reference clips and just try to find a key line that we could come back to that could bring us back into that voice right. every time we'd slip away. Hot tip, don't get the hiccups when you're doing recording. I learned that the <gasps> way. My God! <gasps> oh, the TARDIS! The TARDIS! I'm hiccuping again. Diana. 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 Hey. 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 Justin. The only way we can defeat him is if we work together. And stop hiccuping. You don't often get hiccups. I get them a lot. Something about the recording where like you're trying to distort your voice and you end up coughing and choking, it triggers whatever that thing is that makes mm. hiccups happen. Boom. Rate of your breath changes. Goes or something. irregular. It's, it's, like, yeah, it's yeah, from it's a regular like breathing a... thing, which you're doing all the time when you're trying to do these voices. Yeah, you put okay, yourself in the danger zone. We've played this game before. Can you guess the character based on these lines of dialogue? I'm Batman. I'm Luke Skywalker. Nisa Kodaja Binks. Hermione Granger. Negasonic Teenage Warhead. This is Scott Lang. I'm Loki. Sigourney Weaver. Zorg here. Lilo Dallas Montibas. I'm Goku. Elmo. Hang on, those are a bit too easy. Let's try some harder ones. I don't know why you picked those ones. You have that power too. Dead brother, huh? No anchovies. If you put anchovies in this thing... Actually organizing another revolution if you want to come. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Seriously, Ron. How much do you weigh? Taurus are likes to jolly. Because that would be real classy. You would have Ron intel, father. Even if there's a small chance. I mean, we owe it to everyone who's not in this room. I'm not an owl! That's the mortal in you, Peter. It is your destiny. I love you. Always have. Want to marry you? I'm gonna blame some of the people in this room. The Matters will do terrible things to me. Terrible things. How about a little fire? Put it down, you fool. Biggest idiots in the galaxy. They're not scared of you, they're scared of me. 
Morning, Daddy. Wakanda forever! Ooh, somebody stop me! Hello, Sydney. I think that was my favorite tree. A true Jedi! Strike me down with all of your hatred. It may be difficult to secure your release. Really? You don't look like him. And upon hearing that it can be widened, you took everything from me. I went downstairs. She can't be dead. No more warrior heroes. Oh man, I thought it was a water truck. You were trying to help this girl. Philosophize with them. Why do you think I sent it home in the first place so it wouldn't fall into their hands? Without all that talk about screwing up future events. Join me or die. I will marry you if you had the body of G.I. Joe. I have been impressed by you. Stick your c breast. You didn't see that coming? If I hold you any closer, I'll be in back of you. Come out to the coast, we'll have a few laughs. Try not to do anything stupid. You should have left your armor on for that. You are an imbecile. And speak of the generosity of his queen. And what is this? My dear girl, anyone with a head that large? I'm ready. I want to know. And never come back. I'm glad you're with me, Sam. You cannot pause! I'm distracting you, you big turd blossom. Oh. Edmund, I should very much like to meet the rest of your family. Choose the form of the Destructor. You'll never get the chance again. The boy who lived. It cast me out. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. You didn't happen to see... Anything at all. Plan is not to get killed, so in Victor's mind, it's too great an opportunity to pass. We need to find a new base. <laughs> the end must have stopped wondering what happened to me by now. I'll take two. Okie dokie. Oh, what the Fred? Doctor thought I might have brain damage. Rest assured I was on line within moments, registering my disgust throughout the world. Quest landing! What sweet music they make. <laughs> Poor Eddie, after what he did to you? That's not what they need. I'm lucky. You can stop trying to read my mind, sugar. I'm blue, Hefty. Can't you see? But you haven't done anything with us all week. Not for reasons unknown. She's my girlfriend, you intolerant sh**. God is as good as dead. It is time to fight dirty. How do we know it's gonna turn out any differently than it did the first time? I'm the ghost with the most, baby. Oh, you look nervous. Is it the scars? If you guessed Falcor the Luck Dragon for any of those, you're incorrect, because he's not in there. It was a total of 29 sessions between the two of us, with a total duration of 31 hours, 18 minutes, and 33 seconds. That's a lot of audio. Of garbage. And that brings us to stay- Of blood, sweat, and tears. Exactly. Mainly my tears and Joe's sweat. Who's blood? I don't want to talk about it. Let's do this. Stage three, guide audio. My most hated stage. What's that, Joe? <laughs> Didn't you love listening to 31 hours of us pretending to be other people and sucking at doing it? I believe it began August 11, finished September 28. Over Cherished a month. memories. <laughs> so it's like an hour a day if you think about it. Kind of slack, Joe. I was also doing the Void rebooted at the same time, don't forget. There were 16 Joe sessions, 13 Reader sessions. We are in Pro Tools now. So I re-listen to every take in those 31 hours and collect everyone that has any potential of ending up in the final audio, even if only partially. I went through about one session a day over the course of a month, spending the rest of those days doing the final audio for the six episodes of The Void Rebooted. Check them out if you haven't yet. Coloring the clips. This is something I started doing for this video, but really should have been doing from the very start because it makes the most hated stage barely tolerable by adding a much needed element of visual stimulation. The code to uncrack the coloring of this is Red equals Marvel characters, green equals DC, blue Star Wars, yellow miscellaneous, purple X-Men, dark blue Harry Potter, grey Terminator, aqua pirates, turquoise matrix, pink Harley Quinn, maroon Deadpool, magenta Thanos, gold Oscar. And for each colour that applied to a whole franchise, there was a lighter shade for the heroes and a darker shade for the villains. Colouring the clips like this was really valuable, especially when it came to editing the dialogue into script order. You really save so much time when you only have to see the clip to know what it is, rather than having to listen to a second of it. And for the first time I used the grouping feature to group a series of takes together for ease of movement around the timeline, used for these Oscar takes. It takes me forever to utilise simple time-saving tricks, ironically. Colouring the clips was the best thing I ever did in this life, because I don't know what it is, but something about the constant repetition of the same lines of dialogue never fails to make me incredibly drowsy. You know, I start yawning, my eyelids get heavy, my head... Can That's you not? So uh, my head starts nodding. <gasps> Forget sleeping pills. Just edit dialogue for an hour. It'll knock yeah. you straight out. I think the it's repetition. just the, the, the repetition of the exact same words. 
It's like, you know, you are getting sleepy. You sleepy. are getting... That's why it works. Sleepy. It's just... It, it doesn't matter what they're saying. It's just as long as they repeat it. But colouring the clips, that gives you that visual stimulation. I was what like, ah. Oh. It does. <laughs> you know, next time I could just walk past with a spray bottle and spritz you every 15 minutes. Let's do it. I'll put some ice put down the back of my neck. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then the I'm next awake, time I'll come with boiling water. So you yeah. will never, like... Be completely right, or just poke safe. your head and go, Joe. There's a spider on your back. What? <laughs> so, so I, I can stomp down the hallway and go, Joe, and he'll oh, stop scaring me. Yeah, because I can't hear anything. Yeah, well, what do you want me to do? I oh, know it's terrifying. Bells, I can a wireless. Yeah, we'll bell. put a bell on you. I'll put it here, no, and then I'll <laughs> ring the bell from where I am before. Yeah, and I'll be here. The bells, <laughs> the bells. Once all the best takes are collected, a huge amount of time spent choosing the best of the best takes. The take dilla take. The final takes for each line of dialogue. Often this ends up being a combination of two or more takes, especially with the more difficult voices. Sometimes you're lucky to get a particular syllable sounding right just once, so you grab it from that take and grab the other syllables from other lucky takes, and then you put them together, and it sounds completely disjointed and weird, so you take the pieces out, replace them with other pieces, until eventually you arrive at something half decent, or you just give up. You can put them together in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have all your final takes picked, you'll see that they're very spread out and isolated now that all the rejected takes have been deleted. Social distancing affects us all. So you have to close up the gaps, bring it all in, and time out the whole video. Oh, oh, last word. Every important sound effect has to be added at this stage to lock in the timing. Group dialogue. In this bowl, there are a few instances of overlapping group dialogue. The cell argument, the blue team goes flying, captains, reduce here. The cell argument was just stuff we improvised, and then they were all mixed together in a separate Pro Tools session and exported into the one stereo file so they wouldn't take up unnecessary space in the main session. Penning was used to approximate their positions in the scene and spread the voices out. There's actually a video on our Patreon of the voices separate so you can hear what they're saying. Just another reason to avoid our Patreon at all costs. How's he gonna fight? He doesn't even have a nose. In terms of music, almost all of that is worked out much later in stage five, but for this video, there were two moments in the score that had to be worked out prior for the sake of timing, and the first of these was what I erroneously referred to as the money shot panning past all the characters after Manhattan teleports them into the arena. This cue is always going to be a mashup of famous franchise themes determining which characters are on screen, so it had to be there in the guide audio. Basically, I hummed a placeholder version that I could animate to and much later put together the actual music, thankfully, or the moment would be somewhat muted. The same trick was used for the other instance at the very end as the shot pulls out of the arena to reveal more arenas around it. I needed to know how long that shot had to last so the closing fanfare of the Heroes and Villains theme was pre-devised, despite that not being a word. Also, the parody song Superstition Bowl had to be finally at this stage as well because it was used to time out the entire end sequence, particularly the titles. The music was done in GarageBand by editing a MIDI file of the original song, picking instruments and changing the tempo, and also adding a custom ending for a more dramatic finish. That was then exported and used to record the vocals, a blasphemy against the genius of Stevie Wonder, and then those were edited together with the music in a separate Pro Tools session with reverbs added to create the final song, which then went straight into the main session. The final duration of the guide audio came out at 38 minutes and 27 seconds, and we bounce it. Um, that doesn't mean we throw it on the floor. It's just a fancy audio word for export. And here's the weirdest step. To prepare the audio for Adobe Animate, I have to stretch it by a fraction of a percent. I've been doing this since the beginning. I have no idea why this is necessary, but it is. If I bring the audio into Animate as it is, it's somehow shorter than it should be by a factor of 0.136%, I worked out after some testing. So I use the free audio editor Audacity to pre-stretch the guide audio by that amount, and that way, when it's brought into Animate, everything lines up. It makes no sense, but I've had to do it for six years now. I also use Audacity to compress it so the Animate project file size is kept to a minimum. Minimum, minimum. Stage four, animation. The biggest and longest stage. That's the right. stage where I keep coming up to you going, what are you up to? What have you done now? What you say is, oh, I thought you'd done that already. I'm like, no, I, I haven't never finished that. that yet. I don't say that. All, right. All done in Adobe Animate, the software formerly known as Flash. What are we going to call the software that we use to animate stuff? I've got it! Flash! And then 10 years later, they're like, oh, we should probably call it anime. Yeah. Mm. Dates. From the start of face animation, this stage was completed in 78 days of continuous 16 hour days work from the 29th of September to the 15th of December. 78 days. Whew. But that does not include, wait, wait, that does not include the tracing and drawing <laughs> of all the new updated characters and drawing the new face shapes, which was done over many other days early in the year, in between and during the making of our other Seasoning 5 sandwiches. Actually, I started tracing characters in 2018 before we'd even finished the script because we had enough of an idea, eh, because we had enough of an idea of who was going to be included. Of we going to include. I didn't keep an accurate record, but according to our whiteboard calendar photo archive, after doing some difficult archaeological work trying to decipher that thing, 
It was about 40 days of drawing the characters and about 20 days of drawing the new face shapes. Although there were also many objects and things that weren't drawn until the actual animating had started. Here's the list of new characters. Not just heroes and villains, but 73 new characters just for the end sequence. All listed here in this numbers file. And the code here is green equals already drawn, recycled from either the hero or villain bowl. Yellow is all new. Gold is updated. Red is not appearing in Showdown, usually because there's a different version of that character in there already, or there was nowhere to really place them, or they just seem a bit too obscure when removed from a hero villain only context. So there are 83 new heroes and villains in this bowl, 53 updated heroes and villains, and 73 new characters in the end sequence. For a total of 209 new or completely redrawn characters, hence those 40 days of drawing and tracing. On top of those, needed to bring in every returning character from Hero Bowl and Villain Bowl for a total of around 440 characters appearing in the video. For comparison, the Villain Bowl had about 192 characters and the Hero Bowl only 109. <laughs> Pathetic. Some characters, often just their faces, were recycled from our trailer spoofs. Last Jedi gave us Leia and Yoda, Justice League, Green Lantern, Avengers Infinity War, Tony Stark, a bunch came from the 2018 trailer Trash Up, Cable, Okoye, Artemis, Lara Croft, Eric Killmonger and Ethan Hunt, Avengers Endgame brought us Black Widow, and Spider-Man Far From Home ushered in Peter Parker and Nick Fury. I think that was all the recycled garbage. And of course, as with the other bowls, had to gather guide, Im you're gonna hear me saying as with the other bowls constantly throughout this thing, we have to gather guide images to trace and to reference while creating and animating the new characters. 1,585 images in this folder. I always collect multiple images for each character, even though I spend ages trying to find the definitive image of a particular character, because I know once I start tracing it, that's it. There is no going back. Well, I can go back, I just don't want to. Which means there is no going back. Just a quick animate refresher course. When we draw a character or object or element, we make it into what animate refers to as a symbol which means it becomes listed in our library down in the bottom right here, and we can reuse it throughout the document. And obviously, if we make any changes to the symbol, every instance of it will update anywhere we've used it. As a symbol, it can be incorruptible. Symbols have their own timelines, they can be just a one layer, one frame still image, or they can have lots of layers and lots of frames, like character symbols. And you can place a symbol within another symbol, like a head within a body, and so on. So if I ever refer to symbols, that is what I'm blabbering about. I draw the characters in pieces initially, and then usually make those pieces individual frames in a parts symbol for that character. Mine the head, which is its own symbol. See all these parts of the same symbol, just with a different frame selected. Just make sure you set them to single frames, otherwise they'll cycle through the parts like these two clowns. Sometimes if I know a particular part is going to have lots of different versions, I make it a symbol unto itself, such as Deadpool and Harley's hands, or every single part of Oscar. I trace them as best I can, and then I increase the eye size by 30% which results in the tamest version of a caricature. The updating of old characters mostly came from the Hero Bowl. The only villains in need of an update were Jared Leto, Joker, Lex Luthor, now bald, Penguin, now standing, Witch King, Apocalypse, making use of a new ankle created for one of our Sandwich Life episodes, and Hans Gruber. All simply because the characters had to be positioned in different ways than they were in Villain Ball. The heroes, however, were mainly updated because their designs changed, such as the Avengers, or they just didn't look good enough, and they were going to be featured more heavily, or they had to do different things, or be seen from a different angle. Asymmetrical torsos. Let's talk about them. Why should we be ashamed? If the character changes the direction they're facing, you can flip them, but if they have asymmetrical torsos, you're going to need the mirror of that torso. Not every part is asymmetrical usually, so you can put those on a separate layer and save time when creating your character parts. And the same goes for asymmetrical heads, with mirror versions of each angle or alternative hair pieces that can be swapped in and out. When it comes to toupees, we look the other way. Captain Marvel had her character parts like anyone else, but then in another symbol, those parts are placed on layer one, spread out by 100 frames each. Then the glow elements are placed on layer two with a fade on for each part. This way you can create an armature with animated parts, but still keep all those parts in the one symbol, just by, in your head, multiplying each part's start frame by 100. The only problem is you've only got 100 frames before blip, each part becomes the next part. Of course, you could always give each part more frames, but I like to live dangerously. I find hands hard to draw. So a lot of the time I grab some reference from the old webcam. Every hand in these balls is my hand. I've since built up an insane library of hands, categorized into their different positions. Outstretched, hanging, pointing, balled into a fist. If a human hand can do it, chances are it's in this project file. So I crib from there whenever I can. If a character has to speak, I know what the lines are gonna be usually, and I just create the phonemes that are required. So like you put an oo, an ah, an e, and for goodness sakes. The characters who speak many lines require lots more mouth shapes. I think Harley Quinn still holds the record, which says a lot, because she says a lot. You also need brow shapes, eye shapes. The pupils are separate symbols that are just moved manually. More recently, I've started using warping on the brow shapes. More about warping a little later. Helps get through the brow shapes a bit faster. And that can only be a good thing. Sometimes it wasn't the full character that had to be updated, but just the face shapes, either because they had to say dialogue that required new mouth positions or because the mouth images I had weren't very good. 
Apparently, in my mind at least, I've gotten a little better at drawing mouths since Superhero Ball. Slap that on a resume. Huge flex. Rorschach's mask. Did I cover this in Hero Ball? If not, this makes use of three different shape tweens with their keyframes at different points. And each tween loops back to the start. And that creates the looping cloth mask animation. And then the jaw is masked into a separate symbol so it can be animated separately. Too many masks. All the creating of the characters and their face shapes was completed prior to the guide audio, but once everything's drawn, you need the guide audio to begin the actual animation. According to my file backups, the new and updated characters were completed on March 25, and the new face shapes were completed on July 17. I hope you're taking notes. Creating the timeline. So we add the guide audio, and because it's 38 minutes, 27 seconds long, which equals 55,368 frames, and Adobe Animate only allows a maximum of 16,000 frames per timeline, the video and therefore the audio had to be split into five parts. So the split points had to be carefully chosen because I wanted them to round off to the second. OCD, you know me. The first part, lasting 8.42, goes up to Darth Vader flushing himself. The second, lasting 8.19, goes up to Leia saying good luck to the time travelers. The third and shortest part, at only 2.45, is the time travel sequence up until the Terminator explodes and they're sent back to the present. Part four, at 9.14, goes right up until Oscar explodes. And the fifth and final part, at 9.27 or 9.07 without the end screen, uh, goes up to the end. Duh. Splitting into five also made it psychologically less daunting. Instead of one impossibly big job, it became five insanely big jobs. Much better. I made sure to save a backup of the project at the end of each day. Which was really the beginning of the day because I was going to bed at 3 a.m. most nights, mornings, whatever. The first step is to mark in the shot breaks using the audio and then place the characters into the timeline, into the shots which they appear. Something different that I started doing with the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer spoof is using the camera as a quicker way to do cutting back and forth between two or three different shots, particularly if it's a back and forth between two or three characters and you're going to be returning to the same camera angle more than once. Instead of splitting the whole timeline each time there's a cut, you can put all the characters onto the stage, some outside the frame, separated from each other to create the different angles and then just move the camera between them as your means of cutting. This took me way too long to integrate, not to mention using depth layers, which we'll get to soon. I'd been using chopsticks and then I looked over and saw a spoon just sitting there. In days gone by, I would have just copied the full guide audio into each character's timeline and scrolled to the points where they speak and start animating there. But I've since learned that this slows things down a lot in the main timeline when you're trying to animate a character symbol that has a lot of frames. I guess maybe it needs to load every frame of the symbol even if there's nothing actually happening in those frames. I'm not sure but I've found it smoother when the symbols have less frames so now I chop the audio up and only give the parts to a character that they're featured in. Now I'm stingy. Even so, some heavily featured characters still end up with lots of frames. Deadpool had 7,500, Oscar had 7,300, Harley Quinn had 6,400. And they were definitely the slowest symbols to move around in the main timeline. Lazy, shiftless, good-for-nothing symbols! Most everything's drawn now, so it's face animation time. In the previous bowls, I inserted all the characters into the timeline first, before starting the face animation. This time I inserted them and copied the audio into the character's timeline and did the face animation as I went, shot by shot, start to finish, which worked out faster. I think. Once the animating starts, it's mostly a start to finish approach, but often whenever I got to a recurring character, I'd complete all their animation in one go, since most of them are acting independently and not physically interacting with other characters and their movement could be completed at any time. Why not now? I figured. This was true for the face animation and then all the rest of the animation that follows. So now each character has their featured audio in their timeline and their head timeline nested within that. And the heads are where we do all the face animation, unless their face is located elsewhere, which is never the case. As we've covered, mouths, eyes and brows are thumbnail animated, choosing from the various frames we've pre-drawn for each of those elements. Adobe support community shout out. I forgot to do this in the villain bowl. When I'm doing face animation and other animation, I use these two commands called play forward and play backward. And this is not a feature that was built into animation. It allows you to step forward one frame whilst hearing the audio for that frame. I went on the Adobe support community message board and asked if someone had a script that could accomplish this. And to my endless gratitude, a user named Clay UUID, I think wrote a script that did it or, or already had one and gave it to me. So thank you so much, Clay UUID, because this speeds up workflow because I've got my left hand on the keyboard controlling the playhead and scrubbing forward in the timeline, my ears, cour courtesy of this new command script, hearing the dialogue as it moves forward, and my right hand on the mouse, picking the appropriate mouth shapes from the frame picker to go with what my ears are hearing. I become a three-pronged face animating machine! And of course, the ability to hear the audio as you're skipping forward frame by frame is useful in all aspects of animation, so the fact that this isn't a built-in feature of animate is bananas! Not all mouths are created equal, and the alien queen is an example of one that requires a motion tween approach. Tween the queen, that's what I always say. Miss Piggy too. The pupils are just manually moved on different keyframes. Before this I would normally do the pupil animation later once the characters are properly positioned for eyelines, but I had a pretty good idea of where everyone would be looking and hey, I'm here now, so I just did it with the rest of the face animation. Face animation completed in 21 days from September 30 to October 21. 
which included a few days of putting together the combined Super Showdown Bowl, the Void rebooted trailer, which was released on October 11. I don't think anyone saw it. Main animation. All right, we're done with faces. It's time for bodies and just everything else. A lot of this stuff has been covered already. We're just going to dive in at random points and find little pearls at the bottom. Check out the other making ofs for more in-depth descriptions of the various types of animation and movement. But basically, in a timeline, you can have blank frames, which are light gray and have nothing, static frames, which are dark gray and nothing's happening, or you can have tweens, which means something is happening. The symbol on that frame is moving or rotating or scaling or changing color or doing something. You just have to look at the canvas or the properties to find out what. One symbol per tween and there are three types of tween and they're color coded. Purple is classic tween, which is just a simple keyframe A to keyframe B tween, but you can add a custom or pre-made ease to it. Yellow is a motion tween, which can have heaps of keyframes and multiple properties being animated with custom curves and what have you. And if it's changing location, you can see the path of the symbol in the canvas. But you can't add effects to a motion tween like glow or blur unless the symbol you're tweening is a single frame movie clip. There's always a catch. Orange is a shape tween. Shape A morphs into shape B. Green is an armature span. That's multiple symbols connected in a skeleton that you can puppeteer. And that's it. Speaking of classic tweens, this was actually the first shot animated and completed because it was featured in the trailer. Each of these arms was drawn just for this shot and for the hands up shot near the end. Separate frames of the one object with the registration point in the center of the palm. So they're all placed in the center and then each rotated to a different angle to fill the frame and then reverse animated out one at a time in time with the cloth swish sound effects in the guide audio. Good example of how important it is to have sound effects to animate to. Layer parenting. This is a new feature in animate. You can connect layers so that if you rotate or or move the symbol on the parent layer, the symbols on the children layers follow suit. Good for animating characters. The scale doesn't get inherited, strangely enough, but whatever. It's a more stable method than armatures, but it's slower to set up and slower to animate because there's no inverse kinematics. You can't puppeteer like you can with an armature. You have to animate each part individually. And also each part has to be its own layer, so the timeline gets cluttered. But the advantage is that you can animate scale and skew, which is something you can't do with armatures. You can only animate rotation and position. And you can get more detailed and fine tuned because each part has its own keyframes. It's not just one keyframe for the entire armature. Now all Adobe needs to do is combine the best parts of both methods into one all-powerful super armature. But for now, you have to choose between the two based on what's best for any given situation. If you just need to animate a character simply and quickly, especially if there's lots of parts or legs or tentacles, go armature. If it's a more complicated bit of movement that requires animating scale or skew or better control over the different parts, Layer parenting's the ticket. In this video, in a few cases, I tried combining the two by connecting an armature to a parent layer, such as an arm to a torso. It's like mixing wine and spirits. It didn't work every time. Sometimes the armature would scatter. And if you had to move the parts in the armature, you had to first disconnect it from the layer or something. I just remember the stability was unreliable. One new trick I learned with armatures was not to use the arrow keys to nudge objects around in an armature. I think it causes other parts to randomly shift position as well. Add that to the endless list of armature pitfalls. Layer effects. This is awesome. In the age before layer effects, there were times where I could only see the full effects after the thing had been exported. But now with layer effects, everything appears in the final form in the timeline. Perfect example at the very beginning of the video. Blur is one of these effects and previously you'd need to render out a video to see blur on anything more than a single frame movie clip symbol. But with layer effects, you can apply the blur to the layer that has Lex Luthor's name and animate the amount along with the warping that's also applied. And you can see how it looks in relative real time. Thank you layer effects, you rule. If you need one shot to dissolve into another, the only way to do it is to make one of the shots into a symbol of its own and then animate its alpha to fade up or down depending on whether it's shot B or A respectively. Like with Thanos playing mini basketball. But be warned, you need to add an invisible effect to this tween, like a blur with a value of zero pixels, to force animate into flattening the symbol for the render. Otherwise, when it becomes transparent, you'll be able to see through all the individual symbols within the shot. And that ain't cool. Same rule applies to any symbol with overlapping parts having its alpha animated. So it has to be a classic tween because if I've said it once, I've said it 55,000 times. You can't add effects to animated graphics in motion tween. You gotta go classic. Warping. Haven't used these until recently, but have been using them for the brows, as we saw earlier. And a few other things like Thanos' basketball net, Doctor Strange's hovering cape, Superman's hovering cape, Red Skull's flappy McFlappingtons. I couldn't find another example in this video. Basically, you put these little white pins into a simple shape you've drawn and that's your warped asset. And you can keyframe the positions of those pins and animate the shape using classic tweens if need be. Kiss my warped asset. Drawing the backs of characters. Sometimes you need a little over the shoulder action. So you gotta draw the back of a character. I use the fronts as a silhouette guide. And that is all I have to say about that. Tried to create some more dramatic looking images by adding interactive lighting on the characters at certain points, but failed. This is manually drawn on top with additive blending mode. 
uh, in most cases, it's an extra layer in the character symbol, so it moves with the character, but sometimes it's just in the main timeline. The money shot. When I hit this shot, my 1,100 frames a day progress came to a shuddering halt. 129 characters in a single symbol that, like the entire video itself, was so big it had to be split into parts or groups in this case, groups of uh, franchise characters, so when they were off screen they could disappear and help make the symbol less unwieldy. These in turn were divided into five rows or layers for ease of positioning. The first step was to position and scale them all within their groups because the scales of the characters do vary slightly. I haven't kept to a strict scale when creating them, to my shame. The audio was used to make sure that each group appeared when their theme started in the mashup. This temporary green guide was placed within the symbol and given the same motion as the camera to show which part of the object was being seen at any given time. Then most of these 129 characters were given some kind of animation, some small and subtle, some big and distracting. And then the shot goes by too quickly for you to see any of them clearly. But hey, that's what playback speed controls are for. This, just the shot, that's what they're for. Somehow YouTube knew, years in advance. I don't like having too many layers in the main timeline, dang it. So in some shots, multiple characters are grouped into the one symbol, so they only have to take up one layer. The hands in shot and the money shot were two of these, but there were many smaller ones as well. Anything would be smaller than the money shot. If you don't need the characters to be at different depths, it just keeps things simpler. The call to action was the longest of these, at 1000 plus frames. That's big! Deadpool's brain overloading is a good example of how it can often help to change how objects are connected in the middle of a piece of animation. In this shot, Deadpool grabs his head, which then moves a lot. As soon as he grabs his head, the armatures for his arm are changed to remove the hands so that they become part of the head object, because animating the forearms to connect to the hands rather than animating the hands to stay flat against the moving head is a lot easier to do and makes it less obvious to spot the joints. However, this is the only circumstance in which cutting off someone's hands and attaching them to their head is acceptable behavior. Here's an armature trick. Sometimes you want a part of an armature to keep going while getting rid of the other part and perhaps replacing it with another armature which has to be on a different layer so it can be in front of or behind something. You can just move the unwanted parts out of the shot so they're still attached, you just can't see them. And then you can even bring them back if you need them again at a later frame. Out of sight, out of mind. Layer depth. This video is the first time I've used Animate's layer depth feature. Before this, I'd been creating the illusion of depth by manually animating the scale of objects and the background and the camera. This is hard to fake though, because when you naturally push in on something, its scale from your perspective increases exponentially. But with the layer depth panel, you can assign a depth value to each layer and also the camera, and you can then animate those values to make objects move closer or further away, or move the camera deeper into the scene or pull it out, with natural perspective and parallax. This is what they call 2.5D, which means 2D objects in 3D space, like layers of cardboard set dressing on a theater stage. I call it 2.4D, just to be difficult. It made every camera move so much easier than it's been before so naturally the number of dramatic push-in shots increased exponentially. It's also great for tracking shots because if adjacent characters are at different depths, they'll pass by at different speeds and make the shot look more interesting by, well, adding depth. There's a subtle example with Luke's X-Wing cockpit. Instead of just drawing it as one object to be placed behind Luke, which is what I would have done before I discovered this feature that I should have been using for years already, I made it into a few layers that could be placed at increasing depth so that when the camera shifted, you get that great parallax that makes it feel more like a 3D space. The same principle was then used for the DeLorean front angle. The third timeline, which has all the time travel sequence, had three more layers than the other timelines to accommodate the eight different depths of the DeLorean and its occupants. Oscar wins the Academy Award for most hands. Like most of the body parts symbols, every time a new hand position is required, it's drawn as a new frame in Oscar's hand symbol. Unless that hand requires more complex animation within itself, then it's made a separate symbol, such as the Wolverine claws, Black Panther claws, catching the Infinity Stones, sunscreen, violin. How do you play a miniature violin with one hand? Like this. The most complicated of these was definitely Oscar's gauntlet. The gauntlet itself had to be drawn in pieces and put onto 29 different layers to animate. It grows over his hand, it gets electrified, it rotates into a different position, it snaps, and it also gets whipped by a few characters. It's lived a full life. Oscar also has his own arsenal of weapons, golden versions of those wielded by our heroes and villains. What damage he could do. Mask skull pop. This was based off a gif of the moment in the movie. The initial gape is done frame by frame, but then it becomes several parts on separate layers before reuniting. Smashy smashy. Breaking apart complex objects using masks is something we've covered in the villain bowl with the smashing of the T-1000. So we don't have to go through it again. Breathe easy but the same process was used here for breaking Stormbreaker and shattering Kong's head. But donk This is a big shot. Couldn't decide who should be attacking Oscar in this initial wave until Rita hit on the idea of them all being green. And then it was simple. 
And then, of course, you've got to have the blue team afterwards. Yoda here is being animated within his symbol, orientated normally, but knowing that he will be jumping and spinning past Oscar in the main timeline. In cases like this, it can be easier to animate them in the main timeline first before going into the symbol and doing the body movements. So I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. The Ninja Turtles getting grabbed and thrown by Oscar's Doc Ock tentacles was a complex bit of animation all in its own symbol because each turtle and tentacle was its own armature until they connected and then they became the one armature, a turtle tentacle. A tur tentacle And then they separate again for a total of 20 separate armature spans if you're keeping count. In the same way, Gamora not only becomes part of Oscar's symbol when she lands on him, it's all the one big armature. And the same applies for Oscar grabbing the Xenomorph and Superman. And you've got to make the match of those transition points. Here I'm trying to get the Gamora symbol's armature to match the Oscar and Gamora armature for a seamless handoff when he throws her away. She's breaking away and becoming her own person. Get your little green butt in the right position. Oh, undo. Sometimes the armatures fight back. The more complex the armature, the trickier it is to animate because with armatures, when you add a keyframe, that's a keyframe for every bone in the armature. You can't keyframe them individually. It's all or nothing. But sometimes when it's two characters interacting so physically, the best thing to do is just make it all the one armature, at least for the period they're in contact. Unless of course you're an idiot and you connect your armature incorrectly. Then it's back to bone one. <laughs> Thanos was separate because it was easier, although when you do it that way you've got to give them keyframes on the same frames and do your best to line up their contact points at each keyframe as they move together. A mask is used to put the same spike part from Oscar through Thanos in his symbol. In Oscar's symbol another mask is used to clip the end off that same spike and the entry wound is drawn over the edge. And then a temporary target is drawn on Thanos to line up Oscar's spike after Thanos' animation is done. And then you've got to make sure both spikes move as one because it's supposed to be the one spike. Put simply, you just got to attack it from two different sides adding curves to the camera's motion tween for smoother tracking around the scene. If a character or object has to go through a doorway or a hole, even though that's technically one wall or surface they're passing through, it has to be split into two because in the world of 2D, which this whole video takes place in, half of it has to be beneath them and half has to stay on top. The alternative is to use a mask, but then the moving object has to be made part of the stationary one because I never put masks in the main timeline unless you're counting this mask, but that's not what I'm... Look! The first method is cleaner. Anytime something's going into or out of a portal, they're grouped into the same symbol as the portal and the mask is animated to grow or shrink at the same rate as the portal. Portal, portal, portal. Masks were also used to put Oscar's katana through these three characters. It was originally going to be the three Kill Bill characters getting skewered until I remembered Oren has a line at the end, so her spot went to, ironically, Katana. But I still put Oren in the shot so she could react to her lucky escape. And thus, a solution to another one of my screw-ups resulted in what I think is a funnier gag. Why can't this happen every time instead of just this one time? Smith Goo, as seen in the Villain Bowl, now Smith is the gooey, not the gooer. And now it's Golden Goo, aka Gould. Made it a little better this time by adding some impressions in the goo and having an animated edge. So you've got to create the full goo with the animated edge, and then the mask is shape tweened on and off, but then you've got to limit that mask to just the full goo so you don't have the specular elements go beyond the edge, and you can't mask a mask. You have to manually trim the mask by cutting and pasting and deleting the inverse, and oh heck! Let's just say it's a good thing it's just this one shot. Oh wait, it happens in the background as well. But thus we have a character I refer to as Goldsmith. More about him when we get to the background action two hours from now. Optimus Prime transformation. This was even harder than watching a Transformers movie. I was originally going to try and copy an actual transformation that an Optimus Prime toy is able to make, but in the end I went for a custom DIY finish, which I think worked out to be easier. Both the truck and Optimus were constructed in as many separate pieces as I could stand to animate, and then the start positions of the truck and the end positions of Optimus are placed together with every piece on its own layer. At the start of the animation, Optimus's pieces are moved to be hidden behind the truck, then individually animated to arrive at their end positions in interesting circumstances cuitous ways, because this is what it looks like if you just go from A to B. Ugh. It's like the ones the humans make in Age of Extinction. Then the truck pieces, which are on top, have to be moved to look like they're doing something, but actually they're just moving out of frame or quickly transitioning into the Optimus pieces, in the case of the two windscreens. I animated the camera move first so I knew when the pieces would be out of shot. I'm pretty sure ILM does the actual transformations in those movies in the same way, just a million times better. The sword was a separate symbol cut up using masks and then those parts were animated to slide into the end positions and create the full sword. Oscar's Aurumbot was a lot easier because we just see the end of the transformation so we can just work backwards to animate all the parts into their end positions. Having the various parts shudder as they lock into a new position really helps, as I'm sure ILM will tell you. 
next time you talk to them. For foot zoom out. This was an issue because the outline of Oscar's body had to be thinner in the close-up than in the wide, so shape tweens to the rescue. Most of the objects are just single frame deals, but some have animations or changes they need to go through over the course of the video. Ch -ch changes The biggest pain of these was the DeLorean wide angle. It drives in, kicking up dust, the blue bars glow, it expands into minivan mode, it switches into flight mode, it gets electrocuted, the silhouettes inside change. It's a real character. The wheels rotating into hover position made use of shape tweens to fake a 3D effect. Shape tweens have been covered extensively in earlier sandwich makings, but sometimes the tween doesn't go the way you want it to, and you have to use these shape hints to force it to do your evil bidding. Of course, I've only just recently figured out how to get the dang shape hints to work. Tip, set snap to object on. And then you just have to use the letters to mark the start and end positions of certain points. Although sometimes it takes an absurd number of shape hints before the tween actually takes the hint and goes, Oh, you want me to do the most obvious, most simple transformation? Oh, I never would have guessed that without you doing 90% of the work for me. Personifying a shape tween is the first indication of going insane. In the time travel sequence, each of the nine characters is on screen pretty much the whole way through, so they have to be animated one by one, reacting to every beat. It was the same with the call to action. Not only do you need to animate the character talking, you need to animate everyone else reacting to them. This is why I prefer to only have one character on screen at any given time. Check out this little do whizzle. Don't know what it does, but this is how it was animated. Creating a loop of this 70% opaque black rectangle randomly fluctuating its length, copied with staggered start times over this rectangle, divided into the right colors, and then placed under this rectangle with 190 holes punched through it. In the film, they probably just used LEDs or something. Pfft, that's cheating. Tried to use a gif of the real Shirley Temple as a guide to animate the headless cartoon one and failed spectacularly. The head was kept separate so I could make a repeating loop of the body dancing, but then the head had to be animated to stay on the neck and it didn't like that. Mask prospector transformation. Each body part has its own mini transformation, just using simple transparency changes, and then the head and hat are a frame by frame job. It wasn't me, it was a frame job. When the color's changing and you're not using shape tweens for the animation, you can still use shape tweens to eye drop the right color for the right frame. Don't cast them aside. This four frame whirl element with a little blur is used to create his characteristic spin effect. I think this is the one shot that made animate crash on export. I blame the whirls. I blame the entire whirls. Picasso, this was a fun one, got some reference of Pablo Picasso's paintings and clearly rose to his level or possibly even above in crafting these Picassoified versions of the Harry Potter characters. Some parts were made separate so eyes could blink or arms could dangle but every bit is animated to wobble and appear rubbery. Because of course Picasso's preferred medium was latex. Wonder Woman's lasso is shape tween animated except it's not even a shape, it's just a line. A bright yellow line with an additive blending mode and glow effect added. Grabbing Oscar, each character got their own Oscar limb for this shot, and Oscar just happened to lose those limbs at the same time. Coincidence or evidence of theft? Superman's symbol contains Oscar's arm up until the snap because he gets too attached to it. Zapping the warriors, same bones placed in the character's final position as a color effect helps blend what is otherwise an instant transition. Sometimes the bones are attached to their weapons using layer parenting and then they're all made to drop with classic tweens. It couldn't be simpler to kill someone. Characters getting dusted, so you have a copy of the character on a lower layer, make it brown. Then you copy the same shape tween and use it to mask away both layers, but you delay the brown mask by about six frames and that creates this brown bleeding edge. Then these dust elements, created for our Avengers Endgame trailer spoof, are colored brown also and added to that edge as it moves, so it looks like the brown is disintegrating. And why am I explaining? You can see it. Could probably say that about any of this though. I have to fill the audio. Superman and Wonder Woman had extra layers because they've got things in their midst that need to remain and Hulk had to be split into two symbols because Oscar's torso and Colossus had to go between. With Gollum, at a certain point the ring is added on top and bottom so he can wipe away and the ring can stay. Yay. Diving into Oscar's gullet, accomplished using layer depth and these layers, with this last one used four times with decreasing brightness. Layer depth. Where have you been all my life? What's a function like you doing in a software like this? Alan Rickman's. These were some of the last characters drawn done during the animation stage. I wanted this to read clearly as the same actor, so I took Rickman's face as Snape and adapted it to each of these three other characters. And then it's on to the end sequence, which is all new characters. Had to do some set extensions on the arena high angle. Bioshock characters, another example of one armature becoming two. Ryu and Chun-Li. I think it's right. Is it Ryu or Ryu? Required some more intense animation than usual because I had to replicate the Street Fighter style, which is awesome, whereas my style is I have no style. So I used GIFs as reference for these and for Sonic. Selimoon animated the patails separately with motion tweens, which helped because then you can use curves to ease the rotation at the zenith of each pendulum swing. Tried to make an anime style explosion and I blew it. The big end shot is supposed to be just an everything bowl centered around King Ghidorah, which was a complex character with armatures for two legs, two tails, and three necks. The other characters were grouped into two symbols, one for in front and one for behind Big G. Layer depth is used to bring the DeLorean from the back to the front without needing to split the motion tween, which always changes the curve. Another advantage of layer depth. Layer depth is like Christmas every layer. Populating shots. The final step for the foreground animation was to go back and populate a bunch of shots, fill the frame around the focal characters 
characters with other characters to give a false sense of greater numbers. This was needed mostly at the beginning and end, before and after the battle. The trouble is there's so many characters and you can put any of them in there, so it became about making sure to include every character that had already appeared in the previous two videos. The cell was good for this, especially since a few of the characters I only had as heads due to how they were used in the Hero Bowl, so I made some generic torsos for them and snuck them into the back row. Just one of the perks of having a friend on the inside. And also trying to pick ones that had some loose connection with the focal character or characters in the shot. For example, Westworld character has two Western characters behind her. When they're talking about a parent being killed by a child, these guys sort of all relate to that idea. Mike Myers has Michael Myers and a character that looks a little bit like a fembot. Doc and Marty with the Walter and Jesse? Eh. The list does not go on. I think those are the only examples. The rest was just whoever was left. So like this moment of shock after Oscar reveals he has powers was a great opportunity to cram in these villains who only have shocked expressions. Once again, using the big list to tick them off, in this column I gave them a number for how many lines of dialogue they had, if any, a dot for any non-verbal action they performed, a dollar sign if they appeared in the money shot, a backward slash if they popped up in the cell at the start, a forward slash if they were in the pre-battle bit, a greater than if they were in the running shot, or an E if they showed up at the end. So that way I could tick them off and make sure they all got their 15 frames of fame. Backgrounds were all reused from previous bowls except Wooshy Woosh and the 1939 arena with its Death Star 2 inspired golden orb. Masks are great for making partial changes to things. That's what life's taught me. The crowd went through some changes as well for once. In 1939, it's Sparsa, just had to delete about 75% of them, and they also boo. So each of the four types were given a boo version, and then after Oscar dies, they also get given knockdown versions, stand up and cheer versions, and stand still versions. Thankfully, Animate has a find and replace feature, otherwise if I had to individually swap these guys out for each new version, I'd still be doing it. And for the first time, we actually get up close and personal with some of the arena crown and discover that they're actually kind of attractive, despite how they sound. Very smooth, no annoying blemishes or eyeballs. Elements is a term I use for effects like symbols that I can use in multiple projects such as fire and smoke. I actually have an animate project that's just a library of all the elements I've made over six years of making these sandwiches. What a legacy. The most common elements are the simplest and most boring ones. Light and shadow. Simple white and black radial gradients that can be used often with special blending modes to quickly add more detailed lighting to a scene. Those are just simple single frame elements and textures is just another example of this. Taking an element like this and duplicating a lot can quickly create a more detailed surface. But most of the elements are multi-frame animations. Some are one-off movements like debris bursts or explosions and some are looping animations like fire or rain. In the words of James Taylor, I've seen fire and I've seen rain, and now so have you. And a lot, and a lot, uh, and a lot of the elements are created grayscale, so their color can be determined within each scene by simply adding a color effect in the symbol's properties. Particles, okay. There is great value to a looping element that can be flipped, rotated to any angle, and started at any one of its 48 or 96 frames. Those are the number of frames I usually give them. You can build an array of them with enough variation that you can fool the eye into not realizing it's just the same exact thing copied a dozen times. So these elements are my faves. Elements like a rising fireball can only go in one direction, in this case up, but can be flipped horizontally for some variation. Usually that's not enough though, so then you'll need to make a few different versions. I have three balls and they can all be flipped. Goodness gracious. Lots of elements in Showdown Bowl are returning favorites, but there are some new kids on the block. Let's overanalyze them, shall we? Clouds through. Images of clouds becomes scaling images of clouds, becomes ring of scaling images of clouds, becomes multiple rings of scaling images of clouds to create this flying through the clouds shot. Debris flakes and flakes fall for when Shredder shreds the pizza box. Glints, gun flares and tracer shoots for war machine guns. Oscar crack, we've had rock crack, now we've got Oscar crack, and we're never gonna look back. Ripple, for dipping the list into Lex Luthor's urine. Spellbeam, on and off. War masks, we've seen these already. Electro ghosts, I already have one of these from the Doctor Strange spoof on the ghost trap, hence the name. Better made a couple more, cause you can never have too many electro ghosts. Explosion DeLorean, a new frame by frame explosion, just for the DeLorean jumping through time. And magic for the DeLorean. I didn't know what else to call it. It's flashy zappity baps that go over the DeLorean before it jumps through time. I called it DeLorean magic. Flamethrower and DeLorean fire trail. This is multiplying existing elements to make a new one. Fire burst loop. This is adapting an existing element that was a one-off burst into a looper by Ryan Johnson. And then there's the strange portal making use of some new spark elements. Starting with a single spark, the spark of the resistance, only two points to its name. Simplest possible object. Create a six frame animation of the spark shooting off and disappearing. Copy that symbol and randomize its rotation, scale, and start frame to create one eighth of a circle. Copy that symbol around into a circle. The green circle here is just a temporary guide. And randomize each eighth start frame. Oh, there's a gap there, so just click into that one eighth symbol and cram it full of spark. Then create animation for growing and shrinking. 
Then create masks that match the animation so objects can appear to enter or exit the portal. Doctor Strange's Time Stone elements are all reused ones, using these Captain Marvel elements created for the Captain Marvel trailer spoof, which were also used for Captain Marvel. Placing different elements on different layers allows you to add layer effects to some of them, as was the case here. Adding blur to these elements to make it look more smoky-ish. Masked glows. This is a new trick that this old dog has learned. So you can apply a glow effect to an entire symbol or layer. You can't, as you can in After Effects, set a value to restrict the glow to just the brightest parts of the image to create a more natural effect. But there is a little bit of a workaround. I use a bunch of these simple light move elements to create shifting spots of brightness, make a mask to limit it to the right areas, then nest it all into its own symbol and apply the glow effect to it. Et voila! Natural brightness glows. First seen in this very video in Doctor Strange's shields and Shuri's panther fist shooter things. Main animation was completed in 50 days from October 22 to December 10. But wait, what's happening in the background? The background action. As in the previous bowls, the background action was its own timeline contained within a single symbol and placed on its own layer in the main timeline. In this case, it was three of the five main timelines that required background action. In terms of the little characters we've already amassed, 90 background characters had already been created for the hero and villain bowls. 45 heroes and 45 villains, an even split! And every one that could be reused for this video was. But just as with the foreground versions of the characters, a few of the background characters had to be updated to match, utilizing the new and improved armature method in invented for the villain bowl. And then there were a dozen new ones making their bowl background debut. And hey, just because a character's returning doesn't mean they can't have a brand spanking new animation added to their already impressive repertoire. Counting the new and updated characters, there were a total of 129 new background animations made for Showdown Bowl. Some of the new or updated characters were stolen from recent sandwiches. I've been using these Villain Bowl background character parts to help me create other little dudes when I needed them, knowing I could then reuse them here. So Ant-Man is from our Avengers Endgame spoof, Captain Marvel is from Captain Marvel, Wasp Pales from the 2018 trailer Trash Up, Mysterio cites Spider-Man Far From home is his country of origin, the other ones just came in off the street. Most of the time creating these new characters is a case of drawing over existing parts and using the same exact running cycle animation, but in the case of Bumblebee here, his parts don't match any existing ones. Still, an existing running cycle can be used as a guide, in this case, Hulks. Most of the specialty animations are designed to flow on seamlessly from the end of a running cycle, so you can join them together. Have the character run into shot and then bust a cap, or whatever their specialty animation is. Okay, why the heck are these characters just running past in the background when they should be attacking Oscar in the foreground? Well, what they're doing is they're circling Oscar and waiting for their opening. You'll notice a few of the characters circle around behind Oscar before attacking him from the side. It has nothing to do with the fact that the only thing these background characters do is run left or right and I just wanted to fill the shot with them. So let's put that theory to bed. Thankfully, it isn't long before Goldsmith enters the fray and then the background action becomes all about him. I'm pretty sure this is one of those ideas that came about after the script was finished and it was great because it allowed me to tell an entire story just in the background. Goldsmith attacks and kills characters in the background. The heroes and villains attempt to kill him in different ways, just as they do with Oscar, and also with no success. He replicates himself until there's six of him running around, then they learn that gold is Oscar's weakness and apply the same strategy to Goldsmith and succeed in destroying all six instances of him, and then they celebrate. Okay, maybe it's not the best story ever written, but as far as background action in a YouTube video goes, I think we've broken some ground here. Some background! Because of all the different beats in this rich background storyline, Goldsmith definitely ended up with a record number of animations. His repertoire puts all of the background characters to shame. Some of these more intimate interactions, such as Bane's back crack, another ironic death, was animated together with the Goldsmith side by placing the Goldsmith animation within Bane's symbol and animating Bane alongside Goldie to match his timing. Then in the background action timeline, Bane's position can be animated as well. Had to keep track of when characters are taken out in the foreground action so they wouldn't then reappear alive and well in the background and shatter the otherwise faultless continuity this series has maintained. So once again we rely on spreadsheet technology to keep track of their FODs. Frames of death. If a character got KO'd early, I had to make sure I gave them at least one token appearance in the background before that happened. Couple of instances of bringing the background versions to the fore ground. Wide shot of Deadpool and Harley facing off. Harley and Predator Vision, which was attempted to be done as manually drawn colours, but ended up being the Harley running symbol with a gradient in and glow effect added. Take the easy route, man. And then the background has its colour adjusted and this targeting thing slapped on top. Hidden breadcrumbs. This is what they look like in full because you only get a fleeting, incomplete glimpse of them in the video, but they're in there somewhere. Let's spoil one as an example. This is the part where Bill and Ted's phone booth explodes and in the background you've got Black Widow, uh, Black Widow, uh, it's actually Black Widow, and Deadpool running past, but when Widow passes behind the bone poo, the bone footh? When she passes behind the flown tooth, what happens? She magically transforms into Yukio and then back into Black Widow. 
This trick may be used another time to hide one of these breadcrumbs. All you have to do is watch the video a million times to find them. The background animation was completed in four days from December 11 to 14. Count down. The last steps in our animation stage, along with hiding the breadcrumbs, are creating the end screen image, which has looked this way since seasoning four. All that has to be changed is the Toon Sandwich official seasoning and episode designation numbers, and of course the breadcrumbs you're looking for. Most of the time the images of the actual breadcrumbs are here, but with these background character hunts, we prefer to tease and tantalize you with representational fragments. Eye masks. Don't think I've talked about these because they're way too exciting, but basically at the very end of animation, I apply the eye masks to all the heads so the pupils don't go outside the eyes. It's easily done. You just copy the eyes layer above the pupils layer and set it to be a mask layer. Unless the pupils aren't just black because then they'll still be visible over the black outline and we can't have that. So in those situations, a second eye symbol for that character is made in which the outlines are deleted and that symbol is swapped in for every keyframe on the eyes mask layer using the multi-frame selection setting. But beware, if you delete the outlines from a frame that's just outlines, i.e. the eyes are closed, you're left with nothing. And masks don't work with blank frames, so I just add a little dot in the center of the forehead and make it into a mask that masks nothing. See? Told you it was exciting. Jaws are also granted at the end to any character that warrants them. The process is covered in the villain bowl sandwich making if anyone hates themselves enough to go watch it. After some final touch-ups, the video was finished on December 15 and exported that very same day. The full project file size ended up as 430.5 megabytes. For comparison, the villain bowl was only half that size, 220 megabytes. No wonder it took five minutes to load every morning. Each of the five timelines is exported as individual frames. Many gigabytes of PNG images. This is a new export method I started doing in this seasoning, exporting as stills instead of video. And then these five folders full of stills are then brought into After Effects as five PNG sequences and placed together in a composition. In After Effects, we add the things that are always added, the end screen, the end montage, watermarks, the call to action, which featured an extra behind the scenes video this time, bit shorter than this behind the scenes, but it timed out better. And plus a couple of little extra things for this one, the video screens in the one shot inside, uh, inside Oscar's Golden Globe and Manhattan's Villain Bowl Vision. And the fast forward, which is just that particular section of the second file, sped up by a fair amount. If you want to learn more about those video screens, check out the Villain Bowl making of, but you don't. Stage five, music. The quickest and most melodious stage. Who wrote this? All the music in this video was created in a single GarageBand project. It's this project, the one we're looking at right here. That's convenient. Every time we do the music, we use the guide audio as a guide for the, for the rest of the sound. There are always lots of little references to famous themes in these bowl videos. And credit where credit is due. Let's see if we can suss them all out and the people responsible for them. Game of Thrones theme by Ramin Jawadi. Doctor Who theme by Rob Grainer and Delia Derbyshire. Doctor Strange theme by Michael Giacchino. Princess Bride Inigo Montoya theme by Mark Knopfler. In the money shot, we've got Star Wars John Williams, Avengers Alan Silvestri, X-Men John Ottman, Lord of the Rings Howard Shaw, Harry Potter John Williams, Batman Danny Elfman, and Superman John Williams. We love you, Williams. Gladiator theme, Hans Zimmer becomes Silence of the Lambs theme by Howard Shaw, blends into Godfather theme by Nino Rota, and a little Dark Knight Joker sting by Hans again. The Star Wars Force slash Luke theme by John Williams, little Thor Ragnarok style sting by Mark Mothersbaugh, Avengers Infinity War Thanos theme by Alan Silvestri, instrumental versions of If I Only Had a Brain and Somewhere Over the Rainbow, from Wizard of Oz by Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg. Aliens main title theme by James Horner. Barely a bit of the King Kong theme by James Newton Howard. Superman theme by John Williams. Sad version of the Avengers theme by Alan Silvestri. Transformers theme by Steve Jablonski. Ray, Kylo Ren and Snoke themes from Star Wars by John Williams. Catwoman theme from Batman Returns by Danny Elfman. Instrumental As the World Falls Down from Labyrinth by David Bowie. X-Men theme John Ottman. Multiple Back to the Future themes by Alan Silvestri. A few different motifs from the trilogy all throughout this time travel sequence. King Kong 1933 theme theme by Max Steiner, Terminator theme by Brad Fidel, Harry Potter theme by John Williams, Parts of the Caribbean theme by Hans Zimmer and others, a few different Lord of the Rings themes by Howard Shaw, Predator theme by Alan Silvestri, Godzilla theme by Akira Ifukube, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name, I'm sorry, Watchmen Dr. Manhattan theme by Tyler Bates, The Fifth Element Lilu Q by Eric Serra, and the Matrix title theme by Don Davis. Oh. If you like the sound of any of these small snippets, do yourself a favor and seek out the full real deal. They're all great. When creating these little references, I always use the real thing as a guide, listening to them over and over again, trying hopelessly to figure out which instruments are being used and what notes they're playing. So they are, of course, very poor imitations of the actual themes, but at the very least, 
They're hopefully somewhat recognizable. That was the ultimate goal. But there's also a few original themes of my own inferior design. Returning themes include the overly dramatic arena theme, which has two parts, the spooky mystery part and the grandiose choir and percussion part. Oscar's theme, which began as the victory music at the end of the hero and villain bowls, but then became his evil anthem at the end of the villain bowl, and is of course featured heavily in this video with much more development. And finally, there's the Heroes and Villains theme, which only featured in the final shot of Villain Ball, and here becomes the primary theme of the Showdown Ball, developed into full action mode and closes out the video before the song takes over. And then there's a few new original themes as well. First, there's a little Dr. Manhattan backstory theme, which is very similar to the Arena Mystery theme, deliberately. And then there's the Harley and Deadpool theme, which underscores their moments together. And thirdly, there's the happy ending theme, which comes in at the end when the characters are being regenerated and all is right with the world. And lastly, there's also one little tease of a Fanfictasia theme just when Deadpool says the name, which is then developed much further when we get to Fanfictasia itself. All told, about 25 and a half minutes of music was created in about three days, finished and exported as a single stereo WAV file on December 18. Ooh! You're gonna need both hands, hang on, to do the fingers. Stage six, final audio. My favorite stage. It's my favourite stage. No, it's my favourite stage. Because it's putting everything together. Like, you've gone out, you've got the ingredients. It's taken you a year of your life to do the grocery shopping, but now you're home and you're ready to make the meal. I assume that's what it's like, because I can't actually cook. Fact! Why don't I just do this stuff in stage three, Rita? I don't know, it beats me. Oh, I got the answer right here. Okay. Right, luckily. Animation adds lots of additional movements, you know, and, so, and, it, and changes to timing and stuff, so... Mm. Always best to leave the final audio to the final audio stage. It just makes sense. It's in the name. All right. On December 20 and 21, we recorded our final voices. These were just a few redos and extra bits that were added at later stages. That's right. So we've come crawling back to Pro Tools now. Hand out. The song went through a few touch-ups as well. I'm not sure I improved it, but I'm certain I didn't make it worse. The first step is to manually do all the dialogue levels, making sure that all the dialogue is kind of hitting the same volume as long as the characters are speaking normally. If they're yelling, it can get a bit louder. Then we add some reverb. Now, the majority of the reverb is just very light outdoor reverb, which is probably completely lost in the mix, but in moments where the characters are shouting or there's less background noise, it helps make the dialogue sound less like it's being recorded in a wash closet. Special reverbs are applied to the characters of Sauron, and. Enchantress and Goza to make them sound more magical. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling magical, I sound like I'm in a cathedral. And small space reverbs are added to Darth Vader, Bane, and C-3PO to make it sound like they're in a mask. Giant characters such as Smaug, Giant Man, and Big Dr. Manhattan have additional reverb to sound huge compared to the others. Only three voices have actual effects added to them. Oscar is a combination of both Rita and my voice, and both are pitched down a little. Here's an example. Is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? C-3PO has a flanger added. Flanger? Flanger? Flanglige. To sound more electronic, which I think is what they do with Anthony Daniels' actual 3PO voice. And Optimus Prime has a bunch of effects added to make him sound big and resonant, which, again, is something they do in the actual Transformers movies. Pull up a chair, it's prime time. And then once all the dialogue's done, we do the music levels to sit around the dialogue. And then we move on to the sound effects, which is both adjusting the levels and adding in every additional sound effect we need now that we have the video as a reference. Even though most of the key sound effects are already in there from the guide audio stage, there are long stretches of characters just talking and gesturing, and all their movements and the timing of those movements is left to be decided in the animation stage. So now you have to go and put all those little foley noises in. Plus there's all the background sound effects as well. Those are the three light blue tracks. Sometimes if there's a lot of little movements in one stretch, it's best to to find a long, unbroken clip of the right kind of sound that you can loop across that stretch, put the volume down, and then just keyframe the volume up for the brief bits where the character moves. For example, a squishy, crunchy spider sound effect was used in this way for the Alien Queen. And once we've done the dialogue, music, and sound effects, we do a little stereo panning for things that are on the edge of the frame or moving in or out of the frame. And that was the final audio, which was completed in about four and a half days. And the final audio was bounced on December 23. And then it's crunch time. Fixes the most rushed and panicked stage, if we're calling this a stage. But you know, it's an unofficial stage. Made a long list of things that had to be fixed. Errors in the video that were noticed while doing the music and final sound at least all the ones I noticed at this time, did the fixes in the Animate project, but then had to copy all the fixed shots and paste them into their own timeline, completely out of order. Then that timeline was exported as a PNG image sequence, brought into After Effects, and exported as its own video of fixed shots. 
Then we hurry over to Final Cut Pro, chop that video up like a madman, and drop each piece where it needs to go on top of the full video that we originally exported, essentially covering up every problem shot with a new fixed version. This was all done in a mad rush on the 23rd of December. We export that, and that's our final video, which we then combine with the final audio from Pro Tools in QuickTime to form the final Super Showdown Bowl, which was then converted for YouTube and uploaded. And it's at this point that I crumbled into dust. Worth it? I'm not sure exactly when the upload began, I think midnight. I just remember we got very little sleep the night before Christmas Eve. Not a creature was stirring except us to go and check on the slowest upload of all time. It got to like 98% and was saying there's 57 minutes left and then it froze on there and then it got to processing and the processing took forever and then once that was finished we had to wait two hours for it to make sure it wasn't automatically flagged. We finally did publish it on December 24th, 2019 at 5.46 a.m. Merry Christmas! Wow! And then I had the best sleep I'd had in months after going to bed at 3 a.m. every night, waking up at 8 a.m. every morning just to get this thing done in time. <sighs> Did you want to apologize for anything, Chad? Yeah, I want to apologize for all the narration that, um... You've just had to listen to. Exactly, yeah. And as a final reward, or a final, <laughs> like, salt in the wound... Mm -hmm. Here you are, getting to see our voices, the final script and the final completed video all happening at once. This is the magic. This is what you came for. This is or not. the side-by-side -side segment. Activate! Da -da. I didn't know we were doing a big activate thing. I don't know. Launch! Go, go, side-by-side! -side. Well, that took you long enough. I had 200-something characters to collect. You're literally the last on the list. Oh, sorry. The floor is wet. I see you've been waiting a while. Is this everyone? Whoa! Uh, huh. why, why couldn't I go with the other blue guy? I would have paid extra for first class. Huh? There's just a couple who haven't put their uniforms on yet. Who? It's uh, this Thor and Captain America. Get them in here immediately, Kurt. We do not have time for this. Hey, why did some of us wait naked and others fully clothed? Nobody wants to see you naked. Ugh, touche. Is everyone clear on the situation? Oscar regenerates us at the end of each battle with no memory of preceding events. Until now. Like Westworld. Exactly like Westworld. Does this mean we are all actually robots? My God, it's true! You were always a robot, dumbass! You gotta cut a real person's hand off! I nominate Skywalker. Don't pigeonhole me. So why does this happen now? How did we break the cycle? John, as the most frequent winner of the superhero balls, I have had the truth revealed to me many times by this Oscar. It has taken years of practice, but I taught myself to retain my memories through my regenerations. With my powers of precognition, I foresaw a chain of events that could lead us to this moment. Before the conclusion of the last superhero ball, I committed suicide as a diversion, covertly restructuring myself inside the nearest cell, after which I was able to teleport between the cells until I'd found who I was looking for. Arise, warrior. Where am I? Who are you? I don't have time to explain. In a few days, you will be forced to battle in an arena. Unless you do as I say, you will lose. Remember these words. Her power is unbeatable, but it wasn't always. Whose power? What are you talking about? When the time comes, you'll know what to do. I spent the next few days pottering around my cell, altering reality to keep myself entertained. Why didn't you just use the time stone to skip the wait? I told you I was entertained. I crocheted a rather smashing Christmas sweater. Great. I know what I'm getting. When the doors opened, I stepped out, and you all know the rest. Speaking of which, you tricked me, man. That's Dr. Man. Well, now that we're all awake, why don't you just beam us all out of here? The arena is enclosed in an invisible barrier that our powers are unable to penetrate. The barrier emanates from Oscar himself. Destroy Oscar, then we free. The chimp is correct. Mikey, what are you doing? Painting the Sistine pizza box? I'm taking notes so I don't forget. It's a secret plan, Mikey. You can't write it down. Someone shred this. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's happening again! Oh, uh, guys, I think we need to address the Godzilla in the room, which is the fact that Godzilla is in the room. And King Kong 
an optimal price. This makes no sense. It appears there's a spatial displacement field within these cells that allows beings of great size to occupy smaller volumes. Textbook dimensional transcendentality. Okay then, let's pour a ton of concrete into that plot hole. So no tokoto wa nan desu ka? Huh, huh. I've checked the outcome of 15 million possible futures. How many did we win? Uh, I'm gonna keep checking. You never find what you're looking for in the first 15 million. It's going to take a miracle to pull this off. No, it's gonna take an army. It's gonna take all of us. I'm not working with that man. He's the blight of my existence. You have my permission to cry about it. I'm not working with her until she bends the knee. How about I bend it in your face? I'm not working with him. He killed my parents. It's better than him being your parent. It's better than your parent killing you. Adoptive parent. It's better than the parent being killed by the child. Agreed. It's better than your sister taking one of your eyes. Are you sure it wasn't you they adopted? Cards on the table. You were an accident. Oh, that's oh, right. That's right. Everyone shut up. Shut up! Black Widow's talking! We have to make a choice. We can continue to fight each other. Kill each other, die, over and over, or we can fight him just this once and live. My loyal subjects, it is time for Super Showdown Bo, the ultimate hero. Vuja Day versus the ultimate villain. Ugh, there's so much more pressure when it's a solo outing. You are both here for one purpose to decide once and for all which of you is the ultimate warrior. The showdown begins now. Ah, <sighs> much as I hate disappointing the people at home. What are you doing? I can't fight you. And why not? If it's because I'm a girl, then you are dead, minus the pool. Of course not. It's because I dig you. And I just can't bury someone I dig. What? I think we may actually be soulmates. Okay. This is a trick, right? Although I'm not sure why you'd have to trick me in order to win. From the footage I've seen, you're pretty much invincible. Not entirely. And believe me, if you hit me with that bat, you'd win, hands down. Because, you see, I can repair any part of me that breaks. Except my heart. Oh, here we go. You have both made a serious mistake. What? What is happening? Oh, oh! Sure hope you guys are on my team. Arg! Too many pop culture references to be made? Brain overloading! We're here for the Oscar. I'm not ashamed to say it. Puddin! You're alive? Dang! It's so hard to get some alone time in this arena of death. Okay. What the hell do we do now? How do we get him to come down? Oscar beat. My name is Gluteus Maximus. A lamb's just one shut up. I'm having an old friend over to my house for a light supper. I'm your number two fan. They gave me an Oscar I couldn't refuse, but I did. Cuckoo! Why such silliness? Those aren't the freaking lines, guys. Cut us some slack. We are characters, not actors. Leave this to me, guys. I've had experience blowing large balls. Just gotta find a long crack with a hole at the end I can shoot into. I just want to make clear, I wasn't around during his formative years. A bad feeling about this, I have. Do not fear, my friends. He's just a trophy villain. Did you really think I would grant you 
all these extraordinary powers and not partake myself. Uh. Ah! Did anyone else just guano themselves? Hey, stealing other people's things is my thing. He stole my thing. Aiming for the head? Huh! He stole my move. Bastard. Destroy him, father. I'm gonna kill you with all the colors of the rainbow. Except indigo. If I only had a brain. <coughs> oh no. Oh, this thing is heavy. No! No! Misa used to think Darth Vader was bomb badass, but now say he poodle. I never wanted to burst open someone's chest. I was just born that way. Oh, I feel absolutely dreadful that a poor soul had to perish so that I could prosper. That infinitely backfired. Huh? Hmm. The green ones are my favorite. Don't be fooled. They're all the same flavor. Is that all you've got? Everybody charge! Heroes and villains forever! Smoking! So much for the green team. All right, let's get to. Oh! Oh. Walk the dog. <laughs> oh! Oh! He's strong, but he's not as fast as us. What's the plan? Well, I. Pardon me. I dozed off whilst you were talking about how fast you are. I also killed you. I didn't see that coming. Oh! Ah! Uh! Ah! Uh! Ah! Uh! Oh, God! Ah! Uh! That was probably meant for me, but. Oh! Hey. It's an honor to be nominated. Oh! Ding dong. Oh. Ah. No, 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 no. Ah. Huh. Luke, I owe you one. I think we're even. Get him, soup strainer man. Man of steel v. man of gold. Yow! Martha Fu! Oh, I'm so cold. <laughs> Tragically, this is probably the closest I'll ever get to an Oscar. Ah! Don't be a sore loser. I would not like to thank the Academy! Slow and steady wins the race. Unless that race is fast and furious. Pull up a chair, it's prime time. We'll be right back after the break. Oh. Huh. Stay at the outer edge, Mr. Stark, so you don't get hurt. Huh. Well, can't get any lower than this. He kicked my Autobot. How can we defeat him? He has all our powers. Well, so do we. Uh, the only way we can defeat him is if we work together. Just like a family. Yeah. Like a team. Like a league. Like a squad. Like a crew. Like an eclectic assortment of individuals who share a common goal. Hurrah, I say. Guys, cool as this looks, my hand is on the bottom and it's now unbelievably heavy. 
He's impervious to adamantium. Huh. He's impervious to vibranium. He's impervious to stainless steel. Ah, and the stainable steel. Huh. <sighs> Seems to be having an effect. Uh. I know what he wants. To tear us a new one in front of all his subjects. He thinks we're pathetic. Paltry. <laughs> that we don't stand a chance. What are you, a mind reader? Well, yeah. I can That's what I'm, I'm picking that up on my FM, yes. Wait. There's something else. Something deeper. Not a thought, but a feeling. I feel it too. In fact, I probably felt it before you did. As if. Silence! I sense it also. The tiniest trace of... Fear. There is a hidden weakness he hopes we will not uncover. Whatever could it be? Scott, I think I've found something. A scratch. Uh, walk it off, Hope. Or fly it off with your exclusive wings. Not on me, on Oscar. From the detailed scratch analysis, it was only inflicted in the last few minutes. Captain! Yes. yes. Where's it located? It's on his Achilles tendon. You know who that's named after, right? Ah! Well, how did it happen? Who went for the foot? Well, if it's a scratch, it probably came from me. Hey, I scratched him way harder than you. Oh, please. You can scratch a scratch and sniff with that manicure. Hey! If either of you think you can beat me in a claw measuring contest, you're dreaming. Maybe it was a bite. I was knacking on his feet for a while there. Oh. Maybe it's a burn. Maybe it's a rash. Maybe it's frostbite. Maybe it was the same way I got my scars. Someone gave him a harmonica made from recycled soda cans. Guys, it's a scratch. The scratch analysis was conclusive. The only way to know what caused the scratch is to turn back time. If only we could. We can. Strange. Ugh. Stop checking futures. We need you to check the past. Ah, crap. I can handle this. I'll send his consciousness into his younger self. Ugh. Chill, dudes! We got this! The TARDIS! Whoa! Who are you calling TARDS, man? Is there no one else who travels through time? Boy, they really redressed the town square this time. I don't think we're in Hill Valley anymore, Marty. We need you to go back ten minutes in time and find out how that giant Oscar got a scratch on his heel. Ten minutes? That's hardly worth my time. We're coming too. The time machine only seats two. Expando minivano. Climb aboard. Watch the leather. Who are you? I'm who? Who are you? I'm strange. Who's asking? Yes, I am. And what's your name? Hermione, can I come? Sorry, Ron. Time travelers only. I travel through time. I travel forwards in real time. See? I started talking to you five seconds ago, and now I'm here. Where we're going, we don't need Ron Weasley. You are? Oh! Help us, group of random time travelers. You're our only hope. What the blazes just happened? Doc, according to the time circuits, we've jumped back 80 years. There's people fighting down there. I'm more a lover than a fighter. At least I would be if my lovers didn't put up a fight. On the good ship, lollipop. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. King Kong. You are the ultimate warrior. Boo! That didn't go the distance at all! People, please. This is still in its infancy. The more movies Earth makes, the more characters there will be. Imagine this battle in 80 years. We don't live that long! Hey, what's that up there? Time to go. Alonzi? We should go further back in time and kill Asko when he is a defenseless child. No, that's cheating. Also, you may only end up scarring him. 
Ugh. My God! Dude, it's my doppelganger! Great Scott! Hey, a flying car! They promised, and they finally delivered. Oh. I'm in a car with four doctors, and I've never felt so sick. You know, Scott, it's not cool to mess with another man's private vehicle, okay? Oh, sorry. Doc, what are we doing in a previous superhero bowl? We've only made it 99% of the way because we've run out of plutonium! What, you don't have backup? Who travels through time without contingency plutonium, honestly? The only power source capable of generating the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity we need is a bolt of lightning! Unfortunately, you never know when or where one's ever gonna strike! Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, tiny man! Excellent! But how do we get him to channel that energy into the flex capacitor? Flux capacitor! Right on! I'll take care of it. Wait! Where are you going? Trust me. Hey, Blondie! Kill me! Do it! Kill me! I'm here! Do it! Well, Kill you're me. literally asking for it. Ah! It's working! Ah, get to the future! Vuja day. Are we then yet? Precisely on schedule. Let's get somewhere less conspicuous. Okay, how do we get close enough to Oscar to witness this miraculous lesion? With this. I borrowed it from a friend. There's nothing there. I knew that ginger nut was poor, but who lends somebody air? Not him, my other friend. It's an invisibility cloak. Watch. It's literally the greatest cloak ever. Don't engage. Now, for the next ten minutes, don't take your eyes off his feet. Good thing I have a fetish. <laughs> Just for once, I'd like to pick on someone my own size. Ah, <clears throat> uh, not the face. I'm a collectible. Yeah, you and all the other Cabbage Patch kids. Well, it wasn't child's play. Uh, if a cane falls in an arena and no one's around to see it, does it really fall? <gasps> That's it. I hear you. <sighs> You're our only hope. Then it's lucky we succeeded. What the? We just sent you back to the past. Yeah, I know you did send us back to the past, but we're back. We're back from the past. And we know his weakness. It's gold. Elementary, my dear. Shut it. So we buy him off with gold and he lets us go. No, you idiot. Gold is what hurts him. So he's vulnerable to a single element that's native to a different planet but still happens to be here? That's weird. Yes. Super weird. All right, let's go for gold. I'll try and dent him with my trident. No cane, no gain. Idle hands do the devil's work. Get stuffed. You can't handle the tooth. Guys, I can't think of a lame pun for scepter. I mean, I've been playing around with September, septic, septuagenarian. Blah. So you found, found my weakness. weakness. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. God, nailed it. No, you're going to die for the- oh! Aren't you going to throw all your gold at him? It's not happening. Worth a shot. Uh, I am fluent in over six million forms of scratching. Oh, our Oscar campaign is falling to pieces. We can hurt him, but it's not enough. Perhaps it is like a food allergy. So the worst he has to fear from us is a bad case of hives. If you are highly allergic to peanuts and you touch a peanut, you may get a rash. But if you swallow the peanut... So, we just need to get him to swallow a peanut. Who's got peanuts? I mean swallow gold. What do we have that's made of gold and small enough to swallow? Haven't the foggiest idea. Think, we have precious little time. Precious! Hurley, we need a small amount of gold to feed to Oscar in order to kill him. Does that ring any bells? You know, I'd really like to help you out, DP, but the thing is... The ring is mine! <laughs> Women really do let themselves go when you slap a ring on them. Uh, 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 uh. Boy, this crowd sure got their cake and ate it.
She's been consumed by the power of the ring. I've been there, recovering ringaholic 16 years sober. Ah! <coughs> no! Ah, oh, there's plenty more fish in the sewer. <coughs> 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 I don't think I'm in a healthy relationship. Strongly seconded. Well, that's it then. We are through. And I ain't stopping there. I'm going to clean myself up. I'm, I'm going to respect myself. I'm going to stop breaking things and start building them. I'm going to wear jeans. And when people see me coming, they won't cover their kids' eyes no more. They'll push them forward and whisper, you could be just like her one day if you work hard and live pure. I feel like my life is just beginning. No. No. Harley, I'll never let go. Unless, of course, someone gives me laser arm removal. Your luck's run out, pool. Every now and then I fall apart. Yes! No, no! Come back here! Smeagol! Uh, Gollum! Whatever you're going by these days! Release the not-so-secret weapon! Size does matter! Well, if it isn't the MVP... The power you've accumulated is too much for any one being. You hear that? I'm playing the world's smallest violin for you. Given our current enormity, that's actually the size of a normal violin. Whatever. Why? You know you can't destroy me. Of course I can. Your weakness is your emotions. Emotions such as self-loathing. I'm just a big blue bully with a body I didn't earn. Reduce Picasso. Now! Huh? <sighs> Duh! Dr. Manhattan, please help. Don't you mean Dr. Manfatten? Dick! That's the most horrific thing I've ever seen. John, you can't eat your pain. <sighs> Destroy the warriors. Where's the ring? They can't hold him forever. What? Uh, the ring? It was stolen by that sphinx cat on meth. I killed them. I killed them all. <sighs> Don't you see? If you kill me, you cannot be regenerated. The next time you die, you die for good. You know, I am telling the truth. We would rather die free than live forever as your puppets. Oh, don't make me barf. Ah! Hulk like raging fire! Ah! 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 No! what it feels like when doves die. No, no, no! I got it. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I don't feel so good. Now, Nate We can't hold him much longer. I see you. I see you. Sauron, turn off your ringtone! I'll switch it to vibrate only. <sighs> Fools, do you not understand? To me, you are ants. With this ring, 
Thy be dead! <gasps> No! This cannot be! All those movies you studied for so many years, you never noticed what always happens to the villain. But I thought I was the hero. And the Oscar goes to hell. Guess he was not a popular dictator. Scott. Are we all that's left? How can we claim to have won, given how many we lost? Well, there's one more he can afford to lose. No. Wait. Raven. You know what to do. Oh, wow. That's a much better idea than what I was thinking of. Regenerate the warriors. It was worth a shot. Raven? Scott! Diana! That guy! 10, 11, and 12. Ah, back to normal. So, everyone just gets to come back. Well, that's just lazy writing. Or good luck. Not that I'm complaining. What? Can't celebrate without music? Bring it in here, you little scamps. Family photo? I'm so happy I could disintegrate into radiant particles and float away in the wind. I'm so happy I feel like my chest is gonna burst. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, Harry, you little snitch snatcher, you! <laughs> what were we even fighting about? <sighs> hey! I'm just messing with you. Come here, you big cudgel. <laughs> hey, you can always use a spare. Uh, Mr. Mad Titan? Can I ask you an important question about your daughter? Here. I got this off a close friend. It doesn't make one turn invisible, but in your case, that's a big check in the plus column. I want to see your face. <gasps> I don't think we're quite ready for that just yet. Trust me. Whatever you're hiding, I've dated worse. Okay, here goes. <gasps> oh, see, I knew it was too soon. Okay, look, I've been researching this experimental surgery in China. Shh. You're beautiful. Hey! What are we supposed to watch now? You should watch our movies. From what I understand, they don't all take place in the same location. Interesting. What do we do now? Where do we go? I certainly don't want to stick around here. It's always summer, never winter. Do you think we'd be accepted? On Earth. Uh, I can speak to this. Humans are an extraordinary species. Heck, they created all of us. But one superhuman was a lot for them to handle. Hundreds of them all at once. I fear they'd suffer superhuman fatigue and turn on us. Well, if we can't go to Earth, where can we go? Oh, is there a world out there that we could call home? Well, I don't know about that, but... I can make us a world. I am sort of a planet. Dad, come on. No one wants to live on your saggy old planet. Oh, wait, your dad is a planet? Whoa. Hey, look, I'm familiar with living in the shadow of a parent, but that is ridiculous. All in favor of building our own world? How do we get out of here, though? The barrier has been destroyed. I can teleport us anywhere in the known universe. Known? That narrows our options. Well, what are we waiting for? I just got one question, which is rare for me. What in the world are we going to call our new world? 
Evangeland. Justice World. Middle Earth. Oz! Asgard 2.0. Shagadelia. <laughs> Planet Stark. No. It cannot be associated with any one property. That wouldn't be fair to the rest. That's yeah, actually that's that's a have point. to agree with that. How about fan fictasia? That's horrible. I love it. Gets my vote. Fan fictasia it is. I don't know what it means, but I like it. I'll start building it as soon as we get there. Everyone can have input. It will be the first planet designed by committee. Okay. Everyone brace yourselves. Next stop, Fanfictasia. It's funny how Osco needed live action heroes and villains when there's so much more to choose from. I guess there's only so many characters one arena can hold. Goodbye, alien arena. We won't be back. Let's a ball. They're a superhero. It's on like that guy. Fighting in a ball. Oh. Where in the world am I? It's a far cry Where from Uncharted Skyrim, ball. which uh, was a bit of a Bioshock. Fallout Sims, we got a call of duty. You say goodbye. I say hello. What am I doing? I can't stain my blade with the flesh of an innocent. I have a creed to consider. Stop! Cart. It's not a street, but when in Rome. Huh. Hey, you're knocking the crafts table. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Pluto, here, boy. Ruby, who? Yeah. What's up, dog? I'm so thrilled to be here. It's smurferific. Yeah, exploiting the intellectual properties of other people always brings a huge smile to my face. Hey, Betty, have you seen Wilma? Boop, boop, beep, boop. No, we can't fight each other. We were cooked in the same pot. Bring it on, you half-baked biscuits. Mmm, oh. honey cottage sponge cake. <gasps> They don't get along. No, they don't. In the name we'll of the moon, the I shall punish you. Smith Sounds kinky. Pikachu! Super villain balls away. Everyone stay back. We're having a domestic. <laughs> Whenever you are feeling blue. Ow! Oh! I'm sick of me, Elmo! Kermi, I thought you loved me. It's not easy being forced to murder your friends. It's howdy doody time. <laughs> you shall not pass go. Gotta go for gold. Just a spoonful of murder. Gotta get the one ring. Captain Crunch, you are the ultimate breakfast cereal. Eesh, Rice Krispies should have won worst video ever. Super showdown balls away. We are back. I lied. Allow me to quintroduce Art Spear Entertainment. AKA Joe and Rita. It's just these two nerds above us making these videos on their lonesome. And it sure ain't easy. It takes oceans of time and continents of hard work. But it's super easy to help them out. Subscribing only takes one second and it's free. Of course, if you want to help more, you can always become a sponsoring member of this channel. So jump aboard, because there's plenty more where this came from. Move it, my pretties! Fanfictasia isn't gonna build itself! Gotta go.
Holy end-screen voiceover, Batgirl! Batman's in trouble. We need to get out of this cell. You listen to Short Round, you live longer! Okay, I'm listening. You see? You are still alive! Hi, Chewie. Uh... Thanks so much for watching. If you did make it to the end of this video, we really appreciate it since our audience retention time will have tanked probably by now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Honestly, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all of our viewers, subscribers, commenters, likers, anyone interested in the Super Bowl trilogy or any of our videos. Better get back to work on Fan Fictasia episode two. We are so behind in our making ofs that we're already, we've already gone Made past the, the next big video. I'm Joe. And I'm Rita. We're Ask for Entertainment, and this has been Sandwich Making Super Showdown Ball. Da -da 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 -da. Ball. I suck. But here we go. Hi. You. 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 Hiccups. <coughs> and there goes my voice. Ah, <laughs> uh, you. It's you bumping against the wall. Half oh, a Okay, let's call that a night.